So yesterday was one of the most stressful days of business that I've ever experienced. Uh, we got loads of things that got displaced, uh, a picture over here that got broken, and then there was a fight which left loads of scrapes and scratches all up the wall. Uh, there's also a load of mess. Uh, as you can see, I haven't had a chance to clean anything yet because it all ended a bit badly. We had 40 people inside. Uh, I was working the bar on my own because we're still in this half lockdown, so uh, it hasn't been too busy. So for 40 people, me alone, serving everyone, cleaning glasses, collecting glasses, it's just been absolute chaos. And it finally ended with everyone refusing to leave at four o'clock in the morning, which is the license cutoff time. So uh, the police ended up escorting everyone out just after five o'clock. So for me, it was a, a big stressful day, lots of, uh, lots of little problems that were developing, but uh, on the positive side, I sold a lot of alcohol. Now there's a bin back here, which normally doesn't get full, but uh, as you can see here, it's overflowing. There's bottles all down here, just because I completely ran out of room to, uh, to, to put them. It was absolute chaos, manicness, and I'm hoping that uh, we don't get another day like it. But like I say, lots of things got damaged. We had people that were trying to be sneaky and smoke inside. So uh, we have a little Buddhist table here. You can see that's been used as an ashtray. Uh, somebody's left a pint there. This dress actually has damage on it now because somebody's flipped their fag end on it. And then there was another guy that I caught smoking here. And as you can expect, I threw them straight out. But uh, as a whole, it's given me a very unique opportunity to show you what's involved in the setup of a bar. So today I'm gonna run through all the processes of what I have to do when I get in here and how to set a bar, how to get everything ready and what preparation's involved. So uh, let's start with the cleanup. So the first job every day is to sort out the recycling and nearly everything we're selling here is recyclable. So even the big cola bottles, they get taken away in these crates, goes to a company, they clean it up, refill it, and then uh, we get them back. So that's the first job. Next, we change any empty barrels to make sure we've got a fresh supply of tap beer for the new day. So uh, at the moment, this one's empty. So we're gonna take that off and stack it away. Now, before we clip the new barrel on, we actually have to go through a cleaning process between barrels. So I'm gonna hook this up to the tap and then we have to pump all the pipes through for about five minutes to make sure there's no residue left in the, uh, in the pipe from the old keg. So, at the end of a normal shift, normally these glasses would all get cleaned and then stacked over this side, and then these countertops would all be sterilized. But uh, due to the exceptional circumstances last night, I only had a chance to give them a quick rinse considering it was almost six o'clock in the morning, and I started at midday. So, uh, as you could imagine, I just wanted to get home, and then after having to deal with the police, it was just So, uh, right now, I'm gonna go through and get all these cleaned up and moved over. But before we do that, we need to clean the bar. So uh, yeah, really does need a clean.
so as I go through the process of cleaning up the bar, you start to look for the little things like uh, restacking straws, restacking mixers, empty the bottle caps, make new stacks of knives and forks and spoons for the day, all wrapped. And then it gives you a good head start. So uh, let's continue with cleaning. So that's how the bar should look at the end of every shift, but uh, obviously because of last night it doesn't. So now we're going to move on to resetting the bar. So this now comes back over here. Now the final job for the bar is to restack the fridges. Now this is also usually done the night before so it gets cold overnight, but uh, here's all the drinks. We keep them all just under the bar and then obviously the cola needs restacking, the beers need restacking, and it all has to be done in a rotation order so that we can stock check uh, you know, expiry dates and things. So as long as the, the older stock comes forward first, we always take from the front and then restack left to right. So uh, that's how it works. So because of the coronavirus at the moment, we're actually just using cling film around the bar. It is a requirement of the government for safety and I think cling film is the best way to have uh, a removable, renewable screen every day rather than clean it. So uh, much better than the Perspex in my opinion. And one of the last things we need to do is a stock check. So we need to know what we've got, what we need to order in, and if we've got enough drink for the, the next two days. Generally, we give it two days because delivery times, but uh, normally if we do run out and we can't get it on time, there's plenty of shops to pick up an extra bottle. So uh, we're all good. So I'm not gonna insult anyone's intelligence by the last job, and that's basically mopping the floor, cleaning tables, pretty much what everyone already knows anyway. The worst part, cleaning the toilet. Imagine a heavy night of boozers in here where there's a, a lack of control. It's one of the worst jobs here, cleaning the toilet. But uh, after the tables are set, the bar's set, the, the chef does the kitchen because uh, they know more about the kitchen than me. They know what food they're cooking. It's a Thai kitchen and uh, I'm not tie so the last thing is to take out the terrace and then we're all good for the day so that's how the job goes in here that's what i do every day and uh apart from switching on the lights and setting the scene with some colors that is it
So, it's a nice sunny day today. It's a brand new day, so hopefully it's gonna be nice and busy and we're gonna make a lot of money. But uh, over the last few weeks, while we've been in this semi-lockdown, we've still been keeping busy. I've designed our new menu, uh, and I designed that entirely myself, so that is the new menu. So, in the end, I did go ahead and go with the spicy burger idea, and the main reason for that is we're right next door to the very famous Feels Goods coffee shop. So, uh, Feels Good coffee shop is basically not a place where you drink coffee, but smoke a bit of the old weed. So uh, we get a lot of people that are quite happily stoned wandering outside and they'll just look over and be like, mate, do you know where I can get like a burger, some chips or a pizza? And be like, well, we've got a really great burger in here, so if you want to come in. And it's a really nice atmosphere when they come in because obviously they're, st <laughs> they're quite stoned. So they're kind of, they're enjoying their burger, really quiet, very mellow, very polite. And then they disappear on their way. But um, I've also done some business connecting recently. I've connected up with the Floating Amsterdam. Now they provide shipping uh, boat tours that go all around Amsterdam and uh, tell you about what's going on in the area. So our connection with, th with them is that we will now provide Thai food to them. They can take it away, take it on the boat, eat it, or they'll drop them off here where they can come inside and still eat Thai food. And we're also going through a connection with uh, the Holland Beer Company next door. Uh, they produce all fresh beer, like real beer, not, uh, not this chemical synthetic beer that you can get nowadays, but it's a real original recipe. Uh, they've got about 15 different types, and my personal favorite is called the Bitter Blonde. It's a, a very smooth, nice, original bitter. So uh, yeah, between connecting with those guys and connecting with the floating Amsterdam, we're, we're in a nice little triangle to kind of take over this part of the market. So. We're just going to stay busy, keep on track, and try and do as much business as we can within this area and keep connecting. And the most recent sponsorship is from Leo. We've got a sponsorship from a supplier of Leo Beer, which is a Thai beer, and uh, they've given us free uh, umbrella things that you put outside the front and loads of other little uh, discounts on kind of the beer. So we're working with them at the moment and hopefully we can continue to grow this business. But for now, let's get back to work. Okay, welcome to the Thai Bar in Amsterdam. Number one Thai Bar in Amsterdam. Fun food, drink, Thai beer, Thai food. 